Hey guys, it's Hink here. I uh, wanted to bring you all another uh, video. Today's topic that I wanted to discuss is basically what does the actual science say about the preferred penis size that uh, females would prefer to have for their heterosexual partners. And so uh, before I get into that, once again, uh, most of you all know me already. Uh, I go by the name of Hink. Uh, I'm a, uh, a doctor that just developed a passion for kind of all things men's health and, and penis enlargement and um, I am currently one of the moderators on the sub uh, getting bigger so uh, check us out on reddit there um, and uh, let's just jump right into it because I'm, I'm going to try not to make this too long of a video one of the things that uh, I would like to do um, and my purpose in doing this is to help make people a little bit more familiar about dissecting literature and so you're so used to reading like an abstract, well, some of you might be used to reading an abstract, but there's such a limited amount of information from an abstract compared to a full paper where you can actually dig deep and, decide and like dissect piece by piece. And so that's what I'm gonna be trying to do and break up, uh, break down all the nuances um, in this paper. Um, keep in mind that, you know, I'm going through the literature, but I, there's also gonna be a lot of my opinion on this. And in no way is this necessarily medical advice. Um, but um, I'll, I'll try to try to give you my take on things as we go down. And so um, let's jump right into it. So the paper that we're looking at today is titled Women's Preference for Penis Size, a new research method using selection among 3D models. I posted this uh, on Reddit once and I can't unsee it now um, because women's preference for penis size, uh, one of the commenters made a joke about like, what size penis would a woman prefer to have like on her body and so that's how I'm always reading this now uh, that's a dumb aside I'm sorry about that and so um, what they did is they pulled a bunch of women to try to figure out what is the ideal penis size and this paper is novel because it actually used 3d models to actually get an interpretation of, of what the preferred size is and so you would be surprised how much information you can garner in the introduction and discussion sections of a paper. And so I'm going to try to briefly go through this piece by piece. But so one of the things that they bring up in the introduction is that in one of the studies, it showed that almost 70 percent of 200 men in the study reported some concern about their penis size. And so obviously things like body weight, muscularity, amount of the hair on the head, all that stuff matters. But penis size was a major impact for, you know, over, you know, two thirds of the people. And so one of the studies that they bring up is that there are indicators of penis size and they say, they say that this includes ethnicity and they, they reference to paper. And so you can't just believe all the data that you read. Yes, you know, the data is present for us to interpret, but for example, they said that one of the indicators of penis size is ethnicity. On the study that they used, it was looking at 105 newborn babies and measuring their penis size based on ethnicity. So if you just read ethnicity and they have a reference, you're gonna think, oh my God, there's a paper showing that ethnicity has an impact on penis size, but no, it's on newborn penis size. And so I think that that is a stretch of a conclusion. Then they reference things like finger length and the finger ratio. It's been completely disproven that finger length has anything to do with actual penis size for the most part. There is correlation with like height, yes, and that's mostly in flaccid penis size, but the ratio between your these two digits your pointer finger and your ring finger yes that actually does have a correlation with how large your penis size based on one korean study um, that i actually made a video on before if you want to check that out um, just you know go to my page check that out but um, other things like shoe size age um, even um, weight those are unreliable in determining penis size they, they kind of have a little dig at the PE community here because they kind of LOL and they say, however, about half of men in one study believe that they could change their penis size through non-surgical means. Like, oh, those stupid men. Um, unfortunately, a lot of what they referenced for some of this was from a, a Google Scholar uh, article and I didn't have access to it, so I couldn't actually go through and dissect those pieces. Um, but they go forward to break down some of the basically anxiety and, and sexual dissatisfaction that can occur. And interestingly, from that same paper that I don't have access to, that they, they, there was a study that showed that significantly more men reported um, incorrectly that women would predict that a large penis would be more pleasurable when that's not actually the case. Um, and so um, 
I mean, in general, we know that men are far more concern, concerned about penis size than, than the women are. And I'll, there's another paper they reference later, which I'll also bring up. But they bring up a good point about the um, sexual functioning declines when men are concerned about their functioning. And interestingly, they say that the anxiety concerning the partner's response may be calculated at a cost of the relationship. And so the men are so worked up and they're so anxious that they're not pleasuring their woman enough that they that leads to destruction in the relationship when there's actually not a problem when most of the women you know either don't care or are perfectly content with the size of penis of their partner and so one of the big critiques i have of this paper is they have some some kind of contradictory statements and so for example they talk about how they are hypothesizing that um, women will prefer a larger penis in the one night stand situation because of the increased pleasure. But then literally in the same paragraph, they talk about how a smaller penis caused less uh, vaginal um, tears, specifically in the posterior fourchette, which is like, so if this is your, you know, your, your vaginal opening, um, it's like this bottom portion here right before you get to the anus is called the posterior fourchette. And so there's less tears there. And so, um, then they might like a smaller penis, but then they say that that's more pre preferable for like a longer term relationship. But it's like, so you're saying that women would prefer a large penis because they find it more pleasurable in sexual encounters, but then you're also saying that smaller penis is less likely to cause trauma. And so to me, it's kind of contradictory, but you know, you do your own research, form your own conclusions. And so an interesting thing is that they bring up the prior studies that have been done looking at, um, women's preference for penis size and they've been so poorly done they're either done with like 2d drawings or they're done looking at um, flaccid penis size or they're done basically just with interjecting like the word small medium or large and like basically a write your own romance novel type of thing and so this is really the first paper that tries to look at the erect penis size and so this is really a novel paper and overall you know there are flaws which i will point out but it's still very well done and so um, interesting, they point out that uh, they say, here's another kind of contradiction. They say, um, basically there's no correlation between uh, basically the, the stretched penis size and the erect penis size. And so this was the first one looking at actual, uh, sorry guys. This is the first one actually looking at erect penis size. And, um, but then in the same, paragraph once again further they talk about this paper which i'll put up uh on the side here and hopefully i pointed the right way and it basically showed that um when you had a pharmacologically induced erection meaning you inject an erecting inducing agent the measured penis size um in the stretched was 2.4 centimeters on average but in the pharmacologic induced it was 2.9 centimeters so it does directly correlate between the two stretched and erection induced. They also brought up a very interesting point is that when you actually look at the papers, when there is a, uh, one of the few papers where they actually induced an erection, the average penile length was about 5.5 inches. Okay, so about 12.9 centimeters. Whereas if you actually look at the, uh, excuse me, I, I think I misspoke there. The physician induced was about five inches, okay? But if you look at the self-reported data based on condom size, the average size was 5.5 inches. And so in the self-reported data, there's a larger penis size reported. Shocker, uh, you know, guys lie um, and, uh, you know, honestly, everybody lies, but it's very interesting here. Um, but then they talk about the, the average lengths that they used, which is either, you know, five inches in the physician induced or 5.5 in the self-reported data. But then, um, so if we skip down further to actually material and methods, um, they mentioned that um, the average penis erect length is six inches. And that's what they base their models off of to kind of go from that. But it's directly contradictory to what they just said with five or 5.0 inches. So I'm, I'm not trying to be a stickler, but there's just some kind of incongruities here that I wanted to point out. And so basically what they did is they had, they said, okay, six inches in length and five inches in circumference is going to be our like quote unquote average penis, six by five. And so then they had models created um, with uh, within three standard deviations above or below that range, which ended in four to 8.5 inches. 
in length and 2.5 to 7 inches um, in girth. And so of that set, you know, that's over 100 if you actually look at like a 10 by 10 matrix, they used one third of the samples. And so there was 33 models that they used. Key thing to keep in mind is um, if you look at these actual models, they're, they're like blue, blue tubes. They look like long, narrow candles, okay? So they're not realistic as far as the actual characteristics of the penis. That is important to point out because um, it can um, take, it can kind of invalidate some of these studies when you're saying, okay, look at this like foreign medical grade object and, you know, how do you think about like this large thing going inside you? Whereas maybe if they're more realistic, like phallus shaped actually objects, maybe the women would be more inclined to, to you know, say it's either bigger or smaller than what they would like. But I'll include the, the graft where you can see how they go through and how they kind of skip some of the half measurements to get a nice smattering of the sizes. And you can see that this graph, um, once again, showing the different objects. And so when you actually look at the participants, <clears throat> they were um, all women basically around a California university that were paid $20 to give their opinion, okay? Not, not too much sexy there. Um, and then, so one of the things that they looked at was how does your preference change based on um, a one-night stand versus a long-term relationship? Well, how do they clarify that, okay? So they basically read this paragraph. Imagine you're single and you're out at a restaurant with some friends. You meet an attractive man who is also single. He seems kind, intelligent, funny, and has a great job. You're feeling sexually aroused. He says he's in town for a conference but has to fly back home tomorrow afternoon. If you could only spend this one night with him, what size would you want him to be? Okay, so um, that was kind of the preference. And they would hand you like the best, a basket of models and have you pick out which one that you thought would be the best. Then the next question for the long-term partners was, it's kind of boring. What would be the ideal size for a husband or serious long-term boyfriend? And so I think those questions are kind of skewed because one of them's like, oh yeah, this is, this is starting to get juicy. Another one's like, yeah, you have a boring boyfriend. How big do you want him to be? Uh, so when you actually look at the results and so there were, <clears throat> the women ranged from 18 to 65 years old. So a wide range. Um, if you actually look at the questionnaires that they asked, um, there were, um, you know, and not an insignificant amount of women, about 27% that said that they actually ended the relationship amongst other things, secondary to penis size, okay? So there were other things cited, but they said amongst other things. Um, and then most of them, it actually was because the penis was too small. However, there was still a decent representation of the end of the relationship between the penis was too big. So guys, bigger is not always better, especially above a certain threshold. Okay. They also looked at something which I briefly mentioned called the recall accuracy, meaning you hand them a model and you, they basically try to you know, accurately remember the, the length and the girth of the model. Then they do a questionnaire and then 10 minutes later you have them pick out that same model. Women were pretty good about that, but they estimated the penis length um, far more than the circumference. For circumference, they were spot on. They were like, okay, I know exactly how big this was. And they were able to hold the models in their hands. They didn't go into it. Uh, they just weren't able to use anything, any like measuring devices. Um, but length got underestimated, but the actual girth was pretty consistent. Um, and so what, what are we all here for? So what is the ideal size that they, that the women in this study reported? Well, a penis um, with a length of 6.4 inches or 16.3 centimeters with a circumference of 5.0 inches or 12.7 centimeters it was the preference for the <clears throat> uh, one night stand. Whereas if you look at the long-term partners, it was slightly less, 6.3 inches by 4.8 inches, okay? Um, we'll, we'll kind of break down these numbers later. So for right now, we're just gonna, gonna report those values. And so here once again is this table that I was referencing. Um, a important things to point out is that if you look at the amount of women that said they have pain with intercourse, there was only, so there was 28 of them that had none. <clears throat> but if you look at it, there was 47, uh, 47 women that had either mild or excruciating to extremely discomforting pain um, with intercourse. And so once again, bigger is not always better. If you're, you know, there's only a few women in this study that, you know, um, reported that they had no pain where far more women said mild or discomfort or excruciating pain. So keep that in mind. 
if you look at the penis size concern, so I think this was very, very telling. So how many women rated their concern for a penis size being a lot more than most women? Zero, okay? A little bit more, 11, okay? About the same as other women, the vast majority, 37 uh, participants. Whereas if you're looking a little less, um, 13 and a lot less is 12%. So far more women said that they either care about the, the same amount as other women or even a lot or, e or a little less than most women participants. So guys, like, I don't know, I'm sure there's gonna be people sounding off in the comments, which I welcome, all the comments help the algorithm, but like, you know, every case is different. U ultimately, it's binary. Either your woman does or doesn't basically care about penis size, but far more women don't give a shit about the size of your dick, which so many guys don't realize, including myself. But, um, you know, so many of these women say, they either care a little less or a lot less about actual penis size. So, you know, this is one study, but guys, just, you know, try to keep calm in, in that regard. It's not all about the size of your dick. Um, this graph is kind of just like batshit crazy because so what this is looking at is the penis size reported to be average according to this study. And this shit is all over the place. And so they basically use that dot in the middle as the six point six by five, okay? Circumference is on the um, x-axis, length is on the y-axis. And so, but if you look at the women, like their reports, there was some lady that reported an eight by five and a half inch penis as average. Like, and look at how many, there's at least three women who said that a six by six, six inch girth penis is average. Like what in the hell? And so, it just goes to show you that, um, you know, we're not going to go into any like red pill bullshit or, you know, anything like that. But like, this is all over the place. So women don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Okay. Now we finally start getting into the discussion where things kind of get juicy. And so a couple of the criticisms from this study that I have is number one, this, this study does not really account for body habitus. And so what I mean by that is like basically body fat percentages and they don't specify whether this is bone pressed or non bone pressed measurements. And quite frankly, they never even reference that. And so I don't even think they have an idea of, of the difference that that can make because on most of those studies, it, it kind of depends, but on the majority of the studies that I've seen that when they actually measure penis length, they actually press into the pubis and measure from the pubic bone as close to they can get, which would be bone press measurements, okay? And so if you have a bone pressed average of 5.5 centimeters, so let's just say you have like an inch of fat pad and then four and a half inches of dick sticking out, you know, that is a big difference between having basically the model just being 5.5 inches, which is basically your visible penis length, which is basically your non-bone pressed penis length. So that is the major flaw in this paper is that um, they really, they don't address that. Um, and honestly, it makes quite a big difference because they conclude right here that while the preference for a larger fat phallus is above the average penis size, it's only slightly, it's only very slightly above the average penis size. Well, yes and no, if you're talking about 6.4 inches is what they want, you know, and you're having them based on this 3D model that does not account for, um, you know, it didn't even have like a scrotum or nuts on it. It just was like pure dick. You know, that is a big difference. And um, while I still think this paper is favorable because it's not like women want 12 inch dicks, which, you know, arguably don't exist naturally, um, it still does not, uh, it still does not do a good enough job distinguishing between bone pressed and non bone pressed. And so, um, anyways, take that, take that for, for what it's worth. You know, it's, it's slightly above average depending on what you consider average, but you know, 6.4 inches, that's still a very good size dick. So it should be reassuring in the sense that once again, it's not like eight, nine, 10 inches, but you know, if you are, your average American and you probably got like probably close to at least an inch of fat pad, if not maybe an inch and a half, depending on your body size. Um, you know, if this is talking about like a non bone pressed measurement, then, you know, you're actually looking at closer to like pushing eight inches bone pressed, which is like, fuck man, that's, <laughs> that would be traumatic if that's really what the case is. But you know, you got to take this experiment for what's, what it's worth. Okay. Um, they, they referenced that a study that showed that women more care about uh, circumference than they do about length. 
This is a study that I posted about before. It's actually a pretty shitty study because it was done in women who had just given birth in a, in a like a uh, perinatal hospital and it filled out a survey while they're in the hospital about the importance of penis size. Like, do you really think a post-operative woman that's probably still in pain from having either a vaginal delivery or a C-section is gonna be like, oh yeah, I want like a massive hog or like, oh yeah, penis size matters. So it's kind of a shitty study by design, but it is important to know that only 20% of women thought the actual length of the penis or size of the penis was important. Only 1% said it was very important and 77% said it was completely unimportant or, and, or didn't matter, okay? So this is, you know, one study, one survey in a very odd setting, but, you know, once again, women really don't seem to, seem to care that much. And so, um, so this is one of the you know, issues that I have with this paper as well as far as consistency. So if you look at this graph, it's called figure five, but they actually mislabeled the figure five label with the actual figure six, um, with the actual figure six, figure six graph. And so I don't know whether the publisher did this or what, um, but it's just these inconsistencies, you know, they're just not a good look. They make you question if they can't even get the fucking label on a, on a graph right, how are you supposed to know um, that they're, they're doing these studies right? But basically this is just meant to show in a numerical representation, the women's size preference in, in length and in girth uh, based compared to the long-term axis. And you can see that there is a significant um, decrease in the size of uh, preference for women in a long-term um, in a long-term relationship so then this discussion section is kind of dog shit to me um, just my opinion but you know on and off through here they talk about like oh yeah well um, uh, women in uh, looking for more of a hookup look for more masculine features like a deeper voice and more facial hair but in a long-term relationship they look for more feminine qualities and you know I Maybe that's consistent with the literature. I just think that that's such a dog shit philosophy. Um, and once again, they also kind of, they're just contradictory. Um, they say that, well, women probably like a larger penis size because of the novelty of like a larger penis size for that one night stand. However, they would prefer a smaller penis um, for the um, long-term relationships because basically, a larger penis is going to deliver more pleasure by kind of stretching out the vaginal opening and um, some of the like the clitoral crura and the vestibular bulbs. But um, a for the long term relationships, it's more about the emotional connection, not about the size of the penis. And so that emotional connection makes up for the size of the penis. But it's just like, why would you not want a larger penis if it's more pleasurable in a long term relationship? So you have a bigger penis that's more pleasurable and you have that emotional connection. Like, why is it either or? Um, that's why, uh, you know, I just, I don't, I don't really get the conclusions that they came to, um, but, you know, that's, that's just me. And once again, they, they do make a big, big statement about how um, unrealistic the actual um, models are for so many different reasons. And so I do think that you would have dramatically different outcomes if you actually had a more realistic model or even like, you know, this would never happen, but an actual like in your face, like human model in front of you where you could actually see in like a 3D representation, even if they did like, just like a, uh, like the lower part of a torso and then like down to about mid thigh and made 3D models, like sex models that way, where you could actually see in, in relationship, um, that would make a big difference as far as the outcomes. And so um, one huge, huge flaw is that in this study, um, 15 of the women um, reported that they had never even experienced a sexual encounter. So it's like, how could you include women who have never had sex and ask them, I mean, whatever, it's still part of the smattering of women, but you know, that just can screw, that can skew all of, all of the size. Um, preferences and the same thing if it's like you know a 63 year old woman that you know isn't even about that life um you know she might have a preference for more or less i don't know there's just i get it this is the best data that we have but there's just once again there's just a lot of flaws and i'm sure in the comments many of you will point out even more flaws that i'm missing but i do suggest you read the paper it's a great paper i mean it really is Let, let's not be too skewed 
Um, in the final conclusion, they just say that males with a larger penis may be at an advantage when pursuing short-term female partners. Okay. I mean, that's a pretty reasonable conclusion. Women prefer larger penises for a, uh, for a one night stand. Um, and they also say that women may remember, may misremember specific partners, penis attributes as smaller than they really are. This could contribute to men's anxiety about penis size. It's like, awesome. Thank you. That even if I do have a hog, she's going to remember it's smaller than it actually is. Um, then they just say that men dissatisfied with penis size have historically benefited more from counseling than from surgery increasing their penis size. So, you know, that's basically the paper in a nutshell. I've kind of given you my take on it. It's, it's great data in the sense that it's, you know, it's actually not just like r women, you know, take this survey online for Cosmo. How big do you want your guy to be? And like 90% of the answers are like eight and a half inches. Um, so it is actually a 3D model that doesn't have a numeric scale, so they can actually see that. But it's it's you know it's wrought with with flaws, and you know, but it's still it's still great data, and I still think that it is you can still make a lot of conclusions from this paper. Most specifically, that you know it's not this like insanely large penis. And then for you know those of us that actually believe in PE, um, you know, getting a, a six inch non-bone pressed penis is actually very very reasonable for those that are overweight you know that should be even more encouraging for you to lose weight decrease that fat pad have more visible dick you're going to look a lot bigger and i made a video about that and i think i deleted it actually somehow so that's going to be coming down the pipeline i got a lot of papers that i want to talk about so um i'm going to try to get these papers out i'm just getting fucking hammered in clinic um, we're extremely busy and so i just don't have the time to record and then edit these videos like I'd like to. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I'm going to cut it short here. Um, do your own research, form your own conclusions. Um, check me out on Getting Bigger and uh, follow us on uh, Leviathan Supplements. Uh, me and my boy BD, we developed our own supplement company that we're going to be putting out on the market pretty soon um, to help with things like building semen volume and actually erection aids and improving nitric oxide flow in the penis. So check us out there and until the next one. See ya.